Hi, welcome to my channel. The last time I did a video on the Type 97 was about a year ago. It was called Why the Gen 2 is Better Than the Gen 1. Since then, I sold the Gen 2 and bought a Gen 3. There's no point of me doing a comparison because there are not much difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 except for the obvious, the rail has been changed from a key mod to an M-Lock. I never had a chance to do a full Monty on these before, so I will do both of them together now. I will start with the fuel stripping and then I'll do the full Monty. So let's begin. Okay, I'm back. We are all big boys with drill toys, so I'm not going to treat you like kids and ask you to make sure you're going to save before proceeding. What I'm going to do is uh, start with the fuel stripping of the Gen 1 first, and then I'll do the Gen 2. And then when it comes to doing the full Monty, I'll just do the Gen 2 because, because basically after the fuel stripping, they're both essentially the same. So why don't we start with fuel stripping of the Gen 1. First, make sure that the striker is all the way forward. And it is. Now there's a captive pin near the butt plate. So you press that down, okay, from left to right. But at the same time, hold on to the butt stock because it is spring-loaded, okay. Now once you did that, it should spring backwards like this. So that's your upper uh, buttstock, your striker, and the spring. Recoil spring, and the bolt, and the cocking handle all slide backwards. Okay, and then the bolt, you pivot, turn the bolt and the bolt comes out. Okay, so push the cross pin back in. Next, before you can remove the gas regulator, you need to remove or push this carrying handle back about an inch. Otherwise, these two part of the uh, upper handguard would prevent it from uh, turning 90 degrees. Okay, so you just push this down like I did and you can actually remove the upper handguard or the carrying handle. And at that point, what you need to do is push this part, this part in, okay, or you could use a spent casing or a dummy around like I have. Slip it in there like this and push it down and then turn it 90 degrees and that's when the gas regulator will come out that's the gas regulator and of course you have your spring and the piston you can just push it out like this and that's it and that is as far as you go with the Gen 1 fuel stripping. Okay. Now, next is the fuel stripping of Gen 2. To fuel strip the Gen 2, um, again, you start with the making sure that the striker is all the way forward. And it is uh, similar uh, opening the uh, butt upper. You press the uh, captive pin from left to right. Make sure you're holding on to the butt plate and wiggle it like that and it will come off. Okay, that's it. Here's a striker. Here is your turn spring recoil. And here's a carrier with the cocking handle. Okay. As you notice, there's a slight difference uh, with the cocking handle here, um, the part that uh, cocks, and um, but the bolt and the carrier is basically the same. You just turn the bolt and it'll come off. All right. Now, unlike the Gen 1, whereby you have to remove the carrying handle uh, plastic backwards to remove the gas regulator. This one you can just remove it without 
touching the rails okay now again you could use a casing or you can just press the center like this and turn this piece 90 degrees and it should spring forward like that and you can just turn this upside down here comes your gas piston and the spring okay so okay so basically this is as far as you go with the gen 3 and the gen 2 uh, fuel stripping okay next I'm going to start with the full Monty and fully disassemble this and I start with removing the rails um, the rails is held by these two screws and you have to use an Allen wrench and now if you watched my comparison between Gen 2 and Gen 1 two of my biggest complaints about the Gen 2 was the wobbly front post and the uh, and the shakiness and uh, the rails that, that tends to not hold zero but they seem to have listened to us and corrected that and here is what I mean here if I move this front post um, if you watch that other video this post wiggled quite a bit in this case it does not and also when I loosen these screws um, I could actually move the rail right to left about one millimeter and you could actually hear it but in this case you cannot so this is this is excellent they seem to have fixed both of the issues that I had with it okay so now here you remove the rail okay and these are the screws front sight folds down, your rear sight folds down, and this is your caulking handle, and this is ambidextrous. You could easily unscrew that and put it on the other side, which I will do at a, you know later on. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there. Okay, the next thing you do is remove the the hand guard or the grip and for that I push the pin from the from the left to the no from the right to the left and it comes right out and this <clears throat> you have to remove it to remove it you have to push forward and then down like this here I'm gonna push it down and then push it forward and then down off and you see this cross pin right here that basically hooks on to this okay to remove the shield uh, around the gas uh, system get a big screwdriver about this big put them between the shield and the barrel and then just twist basically that will make it come out like that Right, and you just pull it straight up. Oh, it's still a little stiff. Yep. Okay, that comes off. That's what it looks like. Next is the uh, mag catch. Uh, the mag catch has this uh, screw that has been staked. And what I use is a um, a like a wider spade, and I've made a like a round. So there will be two prongs, and the two prongs goes over the center screw. And if you can break the stake, you can you basically turn it 
loose. Okay. Once you pass the uh, height of the screw, then you can use the bigger screwdriver and just keep turning it. Okay, the nut, and then remove the spring, mag spring, mag catch spring, and then push the screw across, and the other piece comes off. And this is what it looks like when it's assembled. Okay, also the uh, BHO comes off. Once this is removed, the BHO comes straight out. Okay, so you got to. Okay, and that's what it looks like. That's the BHO. Okay, the next thing we remove is the um, captive pin. Okay, and if you notice, there's a hole in the back, right there. Okay, uh, make sure it's all the way to the right, and then use a big safety pin like this size, and put it through the hole, like this, and push it all the way in. I got set it down. And then I gotta push it all the way down, and then you should be able to pull the pin out. Okay, here it comes. Now be careful, it's spring loaded, so make sure your finger is on that hole, and then you can wiggle it out. Okay, it's still not out yet, so I gotta push it in again. Okay, it's out, and turn it upside down, and you should be able to see a plunger and a spring right there. Okay, so basically the plunger runs along this groove on the captive pin, like right there. Okay. I think this is tricky enough that I think I better show you how to put this back in. Otherwise, it's uh, not very easy. So I'm going to take this pin with the uh, spring with the plunger, slide it back into the hole, like that. Okay. Now stand it up, and I get myself a punch, about a quarter inch wide, and I'm going to slide it all the way across from the other side. Okay, otherwise you're going to find it very difficult to put this, uh, this captive pin back in. Now what I'm going to do is push the plunger in and it will be held down by the punch. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the plunger in. I'm going to use an Allen wrench, maybe that will be a lot easier. Okay. Yep. See, that went in. Now the spring and the plunger is held in by this punch. Okay. Now, when I slide the pin in, make sure you push the punch towards the front like this. He's moving to the front. Okay, so now I'm going to slide the pin back in with the punch moved to the forward end. And I'm just going to slowly replace the punch with this captive pin. Okay, as I'm moving it in, uh, let's see if you can see it right there. Make sure it's in. And I'll just slowly move it in like that. And guess what? It's now in. Pull the punch out. And now the captive pin is in. See? 
The next thing I'm going to do is show you is how to, uh, it's pretty simple, how to remove the front sights. That's basically it. Not too difficult. Okay. And then I have to get a uh, Allen wrench for actually this is the wrong one. This is the right one. Fits in there to remove the cocking handle. So you turn. Okay. Once you remove the screw, the cocking handle will just slide right up. It's a little snug because it's brand new there it is okay and then this slide slides out like that this is what it looks like okay okay once you slide this back in and um, you could put this on the other side. Now it doesn't matter if it's what's up or down. You can just slide it back in like this. Just make sure you push it all the way in. And um, actually not all the way in to the point where you can see the screws uh, line up. So you can like put this in where the screws lines up. The screw holes lines up. Then take the screw and then put it in. Now again using the small Allen wrench and okay so that's basically it for this assembly thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe